Welcome back to the reality, guys. I'm your host, Billy Blinks, joined as always by my co-host, Brian. Good everybody. Back to talk. One of our favorites. This is Vanderpump Rules, season 11, episode 11. May the best woman win. Uh, make sure you're liked and subscribed here on TikTok. We are covering all Vanderpump shows now. Uh, we are covering this. We are covering the Valley and Vanderpump Villa on Hulu's. Uh, so make sure you are subscribed doing all that. Brian, this was an interesting episode, a very again, we've had a lot the last few episodes, very Tom Schwartz and Katie Maloney centered um, this time uh, we had Joe and the kind of conclusion to the Joe arc with Tom Schwartz. And we're going to talk about if Schwartz handled that correctly or not. Um, we also have this new girl. Um, we had kind of gotten the tease of it in the season trailer. Uh, but this is uh, a 24 year old girl named Jill uh, who Sandoval, I mean, who Schwartz knew has gone on a date with his friends with Sheena, which is kind of funny because she's 24 and Sheena is like in her mid thirties. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but long story short is they're both competing for this girl and they both went on dates with her. So Brian, your thoughts on this weird love triangle to start. So weird. James said it best. He had like an awesome like 30 second confessional. I was like, this is so this is stupid. Anyone who thinks it isn't is stupid. And I was like that right there. That It doesn't even need to be said any other way. Like it's weirdo stuff. That's why I like, remember we were talking pretty sure I couldn't hit nail this episode. I can't. I don't know what to say because it's, it's so strange that they're just all like totally OK with this or just like pushing it on the rug encouraging it frankly cheering and it's so not cool like frankly katie it's weird there are a million other people for all the stuff she wants to talk about not wanting to be friends with schwartz and not having him involved in her life maybe not to the level that ariana is doing with sandoval but you're keeping yourself pretty tight in his orbit you are you are very mean to the chick that you claim hurt you but you never knew her so how does she really hurt you uh, you are now pursuing the same girl. You hooked up with his best friend. It's just a lot, right? Like, yeah, Schwartz sucked. Schwartz definitely was a bad husband. He openly or has now admitted that he cheated multiple times. He never took her sides in arguments, you know, and look, you know, I was a, a classic Katie hater and I've been a reformed Katie lover, but now I'm kind of getting back to Katie hate. This is weird. And she's got to chill. And then even the Lala stuff, like getting that angry about someone going to talk to that girl for a lunch at a hot dog stand where, again, literally you are banging your ex's friends. Like, it's weird to have this weird double standard. Yeah, I've never been on the reformed Katie Lover stance, but she. Yeah, I, I she she's kind of hard to watch again the season, but who isn't on the honestly on the season? Everyone's just got their own like makeup covering their black eye of something dumb they've done but yeah it i i don't know man they just like even that whole bar interaction where like he, she's like oh go talk to the uh go go talk to those girls over there turn around and it's just like they're actively flirting at the same time with the the courting competing camera. it's just weird it's, it's so weird it's like not like game of thrones incest level like how much they love it but like that was the level of watching it like you know you want to root for like oh Tom Schwartz being non I guess he is always weird but like no it was weird you right it's uncomfortable to watch it was an uncomfortable it, watch like, yeah like I mean Katie I don't like Katie but I mean I'd like to see her maybe be happy with somebody else because I think she's just miserable all the time but if it was a random person that just her you'd be like okay cool maybe this will like make her happy and like maybe like you said get away from being around some of these people and like dealing with the bullshit but I don't know that shit where you eat. Uh, Schwartz, well, you know, besides going blonde, he looks like a total goober, goofball idiot. Uh, the Joe stuff kind of reached a sad conclusion. We got a lot of backstory, though, from Joe this episode, from what she led us on to believe uh, that her and Schwartz had exchanged I love you's. They had been basically secret dating. They were together and kind of just did not want it to be known because of, I guess, the recency of his divorce. Uh, I thought Sandoval actually kind of might have made the best analogy for it. He looked at it as a ha glass half empty type of relationship, and she looked at it as ha glass half full. Um, she went to the singles thing with him and got very upset when he kissed the girl at the singles thing, literally stormed off. Um, she had the conversation with him at the very end of the episode and 
man, what a cringe. You Joseph, but I still want you around, but like I can't be with you, but maybe we just like shouldn't hang out. But like it would be a shame if we never saw each other. It's like he was dude, you're an asshole. Like just let it go. Let this poor girl go. It reminded me of I Love You Man, the movie. Like that's the room like, when she's like, We said I love you. I was thinking that it'd be like two guys saying that they love some each other, but it's really just like deep friendship. Like again, I, I'm not like discounting anything she's saying, but like how tr- I can't see Tom Schwartz like saying I love you like ever, even to Katie in like an actual way that he means it. It doesn't he's not a commitment guy. No. So that's not why I but I can see how she can misinterpret it. Like obviously, like that stinks because he is like just I mean, look at all of his confessionals we've watched over all these even on Stars on Mars. He's just like so like wishy-washy floater, like always second guessing everything he just said. And um yeah, even the blonde hair. I mean, he just looks like such a dumbass. Look like a f- f- an idiot. Um, talking about looking like an f an idiot. Can we talk about the Red Ranger, Tom Sandoval, and his power in his paintball gear? Yeah, I I loved watching the paintball thing from, like I said, the Red Ranger, uh, Tom Sandoval, to the uber serious paintball worker who was. <laughs> Made it sound like they're die with rattlesnakes. Like, hey, maybe you should take care of that then, dude. Like, the freaking poisonous. <laughs> I'm shocked they let Brock like, go in with like basically chubbies on. That was number three, and that was my favorite part. Was Brock literally not taking it seriously anymore? Where he's literally yeah. wearing chubbies. I'm sure if he actually got shot in the leg, but he's like he seems like he's kind of muscular, so it probably wouldn't hurt. Still but like, hurts, but it's not. Listen, James, I, James is also wearing like weird, shirt. Like, weird gear. Like I'm surprised that they like signed off on all these things. Like I um very odd. I went now. It's got to be. It's almost probably like a decade ago, close to now. But I remember doing a bachelor party that had a a paintball thing, and like it doesn't hurt really that bad, dude. It really doesn't. No, you really the only time it hurts is like. If you get shot when you gave up, like you're like, oh, I'm not going to get shot again. And yeah. then you get shot. That's We're funny. in the hands. The hands are bad. Yeah, hands. Like you wear it in the, the, the guy's like, you could lose a nose. It's like you wear, you wear like a face mask. Like, I don't so know. You need facial reconstruction. Yeah. What? Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I've only gone paintball a few times, but like, yeah, it's, I think I wore short sleeves, but like, I'm not worried. Like, you get shot in the arm. It doesn't really, it's really here. It's where you don't want to get hit. One other thing you mentioned pre-show I want to get uh, in before we kind of wrap up is that Ariana's emotions were a little bit more relatable. This episode um, yes. came out of Top Golf too, and stuff. And it was a poignant comment for me. It's like, oh, he's in group chats now that I'm not in. And we've talked about this dude since literally the pilot episode of the, the pilot, the premiere of this season that she's going to have to reconcile re- whether or not the fact that he is the one who was at fault here and she's never really wrong in any of the situations she's brought up. She's going to have to decide if she's going to be able to live with that. And it's a real thing that a lot of people have to deal with. I don't think as much as, you know, when you're maybe our age, usually at that point, it's not like fr- incestuous friend groups. Right. But um, I, I, this was the first time where I thought Ariana in no way came off combative. Yeah, I mean, and also just it, this situation is not is unrealistic, and ninety nine point nine 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 percent is all of all situations that this would happen in. Like, you're not on a TV show, you're not like getting paid to be interacting with people you don't really like all the time. But like, so I get that. I, I was kind of more talking with her crying. I think at the bar when they were yeah, whatever that beach bar was, the one that invent and in that is beach. She talked about the group chat, and then she made a, she started making comments about how Tom Sandoval is like a tryhard at paintball, and I was like, all right, that just canceled itself out. Like, I just find it funny that she's like, oh, he always talks about me, but honestly, no offense, like she talks about him a lot. She throws jabs in all the time. So again, that's just he doesn't really bring her up outside of like the house, like wanting to get her out of the house. Basically. Yeah. So like, I, I just those things that when she's like she says something, I'm like, oh yeah, and then she says that, it just I completely delete it from my mind because it's just like a it's like a wash. But yeah, I meant more of like the when she was crying, like having yeah, the emotional no. moment because Lala's like, hey, when are you going to like real? Like, I don't even remember exactly what Lala said, but that moment I thought was, that was good. I mean, like, that's what, that's what her friends should be saying. I feel like they're too, like, we're not seeing enough of these moments, at least on camera. They're where, like, trying they're to be political. Being friends. Yeah. They're being like, political. They're doing yeah. Team Ariana versus actually just being her friend. 
Right. Exactly. That's different, like you said, because some of that could be mixed in with some, hey, you also need to do that, right? It's not absolving. Yeah. The idea again, and that's again, we talked about it. It's very politically charged kind of culture in general. And people take that to everything, including like shows where it's like, if you don't completely fall in line with a side well, on every single point and you have, and God forbid you had something, Hey, but th- you may be playing this small part in this, of uh, this dynamic, then you're a piece of shit. And let, that's the all or nothingness people. I think we need to work on. <laughs> I mean, in reality TV. I mean, and I mean, it happens in our comment section for the show. I mean, I feel like it's just like it's it's such a hard line of like where people stand. It's like, and I, I just want the comment viewers to know it's like we don't. We I know we sound like we're talking about like pro time. We're not. I mean, he still sucks. Like everybody on the show stinks. Like when you when you start watching the show through that lens, you can really you can pick and choose like when people are actually doing something. They should. Yeah, I mean, we could say all all season we enjoyed Brock, but then. You're gonna have the comment section that says, "Yeah, well, he's also a deadbeat yeah, dad." It's like, well, yeah, he was, but not with this kid. And what are you gonna do? Does that mean the guy shot in the head? Like, what do you mean? Like, there's, there's some at some point with these people, they've all we could go back. It's like again, I've said this. Like, people forget there's ten other seasons of this show of all of them doing horrible things. Sheena got on the show starting by being in, like a mistress, for God's sake. She was on, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, come James on, James was a like a drug was a cuck. Yeah, he was a cuck. That's just, yeah, it's just weird. So, Jackson Stasi got noticed because Jack kept cheating on her. Lisa was like, These people are crazy, they're fighting in my restaurant. Like, right. it, and we'll get to the valley next, um, on our next review. And you know, things still aren't going great for Jacks. So, uh, like yeah. I said, check out the TikTok as well as all of our playlists here on YouTube. We have Instagram and Twitter as well, where you can follow our socials. But um, for myself, Brian, whole team here at the Reality Guys, thank you so much for watching. Peace.